Samuel Adams was really successful at inspiring colonists to revolt, but before that, he was kind of a failure. So let's go back to 1743. Adams has just graduated from Harvard College, and he's working in an accounting firm for a very short period of time. His boss felt that he was too into politics to be a successful merchant and fired him. But Adams wasn't done yet because remember, early America is small business heaven. So he takes out a thousand pound loan from his dad, who was a malter. And what does Adams do with the money? Well, he lent half to a friend who never repaid him, of course, because the friends never repay you when you loan them money, and basically blew the other half. And despite that epic failure, Malt Daddy Adams, as I like to call his father, rewards his son by naming him a partner in the family business. But instead of doing that, he launched a weekly newspaper with friends called the Independent Advertiser, and it totally failed on Adams' watch as well as the Malt House. And it doesn't end there. In 1756, Samuel Adams was elected to the post of tax collector, but he often failed to collect taxes. Adams was liable for the money he didn't collect, money Boston really needed. The city was on the verge of bankruptcy, so Adams had to sue delinquent taxpayers, which he basically failed at too. So his political adversaries get a judgment against him for a thousand pounds, which of course he couldn't pay because as we've already established, he's terrible with money. But this was actually a good thing for him. And it may have just put him on the path to success because people didn't think he was to blame. Uncollected debt seemed totally unavoidable under the British. And who could speak to that better than Adams? Which he did very loudly, wherever he could, to whomever would listen, inspiring colonists to join the American Revolution. And that was a huge success. So even Samuel Adams had to try out a few different careers before finding what was best for him.